come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome, friends, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night, the Freak Show happens whether you want it to or not. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, YouTube even, and more fine repositories of internet talk shows. We watch movies every week, and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure. And these are the people who will talk about it. Holly, Sean. Travis. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie chosen by Sean. What did we watch? We Sean? watched 1995's Castle Freak. Directed wow. by Stuart Gordon. Who also directed... Reanimator and many, a couple other movies we've watched from this. Robot Jocks. Robot Jocks. Did we watch Strict something else he did? I'm sure we did. He didn't do Arena. No, I don't know. I'm sure we've watched. We've, we've, we've been watched. doing a lot of Stuart Gordon. <laughs> we have. So. I know. This is like. Or just a lot of Full Moon or. Yeah. yeah. I was like, when you picked it, I'm like, so, like Charles Band, yeah. the producer, is like uh, becoming like a special, you know, well, a guy on this show. Millions of movies. He's and produced crazy most of the stuff we movies. watch. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, just, it's just math that we end up watching a lot of those movies, I suppose. Is it also math, Sean, that we ended up watching another oh, HP Lovecraft adaptation? <laughs> so should soon after doing. Is that what this is? Yeah. Loose. What is it? Loosely Loose. based. The Outsider? It is, yeah. The story is called The Outsider, and the story is about a. It's told from the point of view of this guy who lives in a dungeon, and he's never seen the daylight or another person. And uh, oh, I can't remember what happens, but he it, gets loose. It ends with the mirror thing. Yeah. He sees himself in the mirror and like, okay. Yeah. I know the story, but I see, I kind of thought like, I'm going to go off on a little tangent. So give me a, a, I thought that this was more like, okay, Stuart Gordon, I, I, I'm like so, so on him as a director. Mm. But what I do like that he does is he seems <laughs> to try to make the ultimate version of the stories he likes. Right. He's like, I'm going to make a evil doll movie dolls. I'm going to make a mad scientist movie reanimated. You know, he just makes these movies that are like, holy shit, this is kind of like, if you really want it, like, I mean, and this. What would this one be, Travis? Well, okay, this one. <laughs> it's I the ultimate, th- like, castle monster movie. Well, yeah. the first, the very first American horror movie <laughs> was a, a silent film called The Cat and the Canary, where a bunch of people go to a dark house and there's like a, there's like a mystery creature guy in the house that kills them or whatever. And this has been remade. It was remade a second time. Uh, then uh, William Castle did Old Dark House. Mm-hmm. He basically did a, a remake, but renamed it with Boris Karloff as like a a mad drunk brother. Yeah. So that's why when I was watching this, I kind of thought, oh, this is Stuart Gordon's version of the Old Dark House of the Cat and the Canary. Pretty much like the first American horror film. You go to a castle or something, there's like a... Rrr, rrr, rrr. You know, there's... <laughs> See, I told you. Yeah. I told you, you'd be great for this. Castle Freak. Sean was oh, casting you pain. as the Castle <laughs> Freak in the, yeah, yes. in in the, the remake. remake. You are cast. So okay. Cool. Start practicing. Yeah. Yeah. However you want to do that. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, for those that watch oh. this, you don't know what, what my joke was. Oh. <laughs> well, these guys, I mean, uh, Stuart Gordon and his writer pal, Dennis Paoli, mm-hmm. I believe, have done... Uh, re-an- H.P. Lovecraft adaptations, Reanimator, From Beyond, Castle Freak, Dreams in the Witch House for the Masters of Horror TV show, and Dagon, which is based on the shadow over Innsmouth. Mm. So, like, they're, I think, trying to, you know, put the stamp on, like, cinematic Lovecraft, which is weird you know because, why? like, their Lovecraft, when you read Lovecraft, they don't necessarily feel anything at all like Public the, domain. The, I'm uh, sorry. That's Stuart what it's like. Movies. Uh, what do we do? Let's just grab from the best fucking horror people and just because it's public domain and we'll. Well, you do it once and you strike, you know, box office gold with Reanimator. Then it's like, oh, there's probably something right. here. We should go back this to his entire catalog. This is what we do. But the <laughs> yeah. problem is, is they went overseas and they just did. like, ugh, like, I don't know. Every one of their movies is a little painful to me to know. <laughs> well, especially They're, the newer ones. Well, newer ones. Dagon was uh, uh, Spanish, I believe, because yeah. Brian Yuzna, who was the producer, who worked with Charles Band, I believe, in some of the earlier ones, he ended up founding this company called Fantastic Factory, and like it was based out of Spain because of the tax credits. It was cheaper to do stuff there. So then everything that he would do, you remember that movie Faust? I believe that was Faust. his also. Based off the comic book? Yeah. 
okay. then there was like Bride of or not Bride of um Beyond Reanimator and all those like you mm. know yeah. So this was during the period where Charles Band had uh I don't think he was actually still <laughs> shooting stuff in Italy, but this was shot in his castle. Do you yes. know that? Oh, yeah. well, it was his so this, castle? Is, this is Charles Band, yeah, Charles Band's. <laughs> it's his house. Yeah, it's his. He owned it. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a castle, because didn't they make sure, lots of movies not? here? I mean, yeah. Well, castle, when he like, had any of the subspecies or any of that, or no? There was another cellar dweller here. I can't remember Sub- now. No, that was on a set. Somewhere. Subspecies. That was the next movie that was going to pop up on Hulu. If we had just let it run, it's like next movie in two minutes. Oh no, that one was done in uh, that was done in Romania. I remember because uh-huh. the director. Ted Nicolau or whatever was from Romania. And so that was his whole thing of, you know, getting people to tax credits and stuff and sure. bring an industry to, to Transylvania. Which yeah. we discovered tonight that Colin's Italian accent and Romanian accent sound uh, I'll, I'll if I can bring it up. Yeah. Later on. As we <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> Buongiorno. Grazie. <laughs> so I yeah, this movie was made with a lot of Z's and I's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Indeed it was. <laughs> Very Italian crew uh, put it together. So what are we saying? This is 95, but it has... He brings back, Gordon brings back the stars of Reanimator, mm-hmm. who oh, I believe, yeah. what was the, you remember? Uh, Jeffrey maybe, Combs and Barbara Crampton. Yep. And uh, there was a movie that was made in the 90s. <clears throat> you remember Charles Band was trying to make like a, uh, a like an anthology series called Pulse Pounders? You remember this? This was under that label. Like, I th- I don't recall Pulse Pounders. Well, this was he, a second production branch for them, Pulse Pounders, I believe. This is where I need more facts before yeah. I start talking out. So I used to watch every yeah. video zone. I am a. <laughs> yeah. Well, he made this movie. There were I'm three old, movies. And I can't remember what they remember. were or like something spun off, like maybe like a Trancers or something became, you know, was one of them. It was like Trancers 2 was like one. But they were all like 20 or 30 minute movies. And one of them was a Stuart Gordon thing, I think, with, uh, or maybe it was Charles Band oh. directed it. It had. What, they were trying to do a TV show or something? No, it was, like, or it was anthology like an anthology, oh, an anthology movie. It was going to be called Pulse Pounders, and it never came out. And only recently, Weird. Uh, like within the last two or three years, like on Full Moon's website, you can actually get the movies individually Crazy. that yeah. were supposed to be part of it. So huh. like, they found them and put no, them in. I don't like, ever recall, because this, to me, as far as I know, this was the last I recall of like a reputable Full Moon. Like I think Full Moon really kind of took a dive. After before the shrunken heads and the uh, well, no, because this was demonic. Toys. This was after the shrunken heads, right? Because well, that's when Full the Moon they, st- they came up with Moonbeam, that was like their yeah, more the childish the pre hysteria yeah. yeah. and all that jazz. And yeah, what was the, the, the shrunken one. head movie? What was the adult one called? What the fuck was that called? No, the adult label. Remember Beach Babes from Beyond? <laughs> oh, it was like yeah. Moon Blaster. No, that's not it. It was <laughs> Moon something, Blaster. Uh, you know. yeah, I don't recall. I don't. Yeah. After Dark. Maybe it was after I Dark. Know. I don't remember. I don't know. I only watched Full Moon. I didn't watch that smut. <laughs> they tried to do everything. Well, you saw a movie. Killer puppets and doll, whatever the fuck. That's yeah. what all Charles Band did was like, <laughs> what was the technology they had in the 60s when they, they they put little people in the, we'll do that, but with killer killer dolls and rag doll and like, I mean, killer bong, all these fucking Killer stupid, bong. Oh my there God. There are five killer bong. Movies. Nowadays, just to just, remind everyone, there are gingerbread dead man. man. I'm sure they Ginger yeah. dead man. Yeah. Oh, ginger dead man. Oh my oh, God. Fuck. That's, wait, where's my list? I'm putting so, that on the list. <laughs> it's Gary Busey as the voice it? of the ginger oh, dead man. It's on the list. But I remember, I mean, I'm glad you picked this because I remember when I first rented this and I shut it off in the first like, <laughs> In boredom or because well, it fucking dude, it, forty-four minutes until the freak really like it's like I'm Get seeing through. a lot of castle, <laughs> not, a lot, <laughs> not of freak. a lot of freak. I mean, you you know, we start off with an old lady in a sweater, uh, and a cat, and a cat. Let's not forget the cat. Yep, she gets a piece of bread and cuts a little piece of a hot dog for castle freak. <laughs> yep, and she's got chained up in the basement as you do. Then whips him till she has a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what a day! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like, I'm going to feed you, but I'm going to whip the shit out of you first. Well, what do anyway, I do little, today? This what little do I cat do is like running down the, like as she's, the my impression of that scene was she's leading the cat down the stairs and then she sets the bowl or the dish down and the cat starts eating it. And I'm like, did she just fucking like, tear, you know, like bring this down so the cat could eat it there? I'm like, oh no, she's actually <laughs> supposed to be giving that to the guy in the uh she just doesn't cell. give a shit if the cat eats some first. Yeah. No. It's not very generous. It was right then. I was like, well, why would you eat, if you're this locked up castle freak, why would you eat this little piece of bread and sausage when you have this nice juicy cat right there? Well, he right, learns Holly? that. 
<laughs> it's like a good uh that's like a good like foreshadow. You know, it's a yeah. good like this is why the cat always comes in front of this door for no reason, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's cuz she just sets the food down. That's kind of cool. Uh-huh. I wouldn't say cool. Well, no, it's good story though. It's good storytelling. If you if no, you need, I'm like, kept, it's like, why the fuck does a cat just come near this? Because door? it kept me anxious the whole time. I'm like, I'm gonna worry this whole fucking movie until the cat dies because I know it's gonna die. I'm just sitting there anxious the entire time. How old were you when you first saw this movie? You said you rented it. Ninety five. So I was I was twelve. Twelve. See, all right. I was <laughs> I first heard about this movie when I was ten years old, and I this is one of my. Uh, earliest memories from like my hometown and playing with kids in the street and all that stuff. This one of my friends just described. He's like, "You got to see Castle Freak, man. Chick gets her boob eaten off. It's crazy. Like that is well, a vivid, vivid memory for me. <laughs> and for twenty years, this that was disgusting. Uh, Castle honest. Freak has crossed my mind. Like, hmm, I should watch this movie. I watch and you should bring it to the freak show. show. For twenty years, I'm just like, this is perfect time. Let's bring it to the freak show. <laughs> So yeah, so what? Yeah, so she fucking whips the shit out of him with a cat of nine tails. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this is how he gets his lovely uh, uh, skin uh, tone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy is Castle like tan. he's the her son from like he's a legitimate son heir to this castle. Yes. A duke. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We yes. find out because yes. like Jeffrey Combs, he gets inherited this. Right, castle. it's the classic story of you inherit a castle and from your family, and then go check it out and move your family in there. Well, but it's awesome because they're not moving it. They're just like we're gonna fucking like make a list of everything and you, sell the right. shit out. You of sell. This. And then you go. You sell? You sell? <laughs> because you, you have go. to have the castle oh. that yeah. comes with the creepy old, uh, the woman who comes with the place. Right. Yeah. But, but tells you basically, a, get out. But Jeffrey yeah. comes would be a duke. That's the only reason. I was like, ah, shit, come on, I'm a duke here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's fuck. American. He doesn't know anything about that. He's like, yeah. oh, well, Still, exactly. What the, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. And we get a sub, for like the first, you said it takes like 45 minutes for the freak oh. to come out. It's almost like we it get a subdued, forever. a subdued like, we're gonna Jeffrey to, Combs for the first Like, we're going to have to talk about the first 40 fucking minutes, and we're we're all hesitate. You can tell we're all like my story, which like because you just find out in the first 40 minutes. You're like, OK, they have a blind daughter. All right. Barbara, yeah. uh, Barbara Crampton and, and Jeffrey Combs have a, have a blind daughter who is 17, but they treat her like she's 12. Yeah. And I'm she's like, newly blind. She only yeah. went blind a year. But I'm ago. still not sure. It's like, is the casting just a little too old because they want to see her in a bra or like, is she supposed <laughs> to be young? Because it's like, Jesus, even for a blind person, they're just like. I don't know. They're just yeah, Barbara Crampton. Really over oh, yeah. yeah, that's the whole point. They're babying her. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But there's, but, there's but the reason way they for talk. that psychologically, uh, I guess, because we find out that Jeffrey Combs <laughs> used to be a drunk, and yes. it's his fault that uh, he I had a drop for nine months. Does Jeffrey Combs play a happy guy in any movie ever? Mm, any movie? No. Just one movie where he's like, "Hey, I keep saying <laughs> Doctor Mordred," but I think even then, <laughs> it he sounds has, like it sounds yeah. like he's very he's happy like in a that magician. But I think he's tortured there too. But he's basically like the decent, you know, guy of the movie so because he has a nice furled brow yeah no i mean like back in the day it seems to me like you know at this point in time there was like jeffrey combs and bruce campbell right where the b movie like like i don't know about superstars but they were definitely in like a lot of the fucking shit i was watching yeah Yeah. and but bruce campbell obviously got burn notice or something and the you know the the stuff that he was in carried him a lot further than combs did because mm. basically anybody now only remembers well, you know, Combs from Reanimator, but he's done a lot of stuff in. Uh, Come on. Yeah, but I mean, he's <laughs> well, done but, guest but stuff. But Bruce Campbell was but he did on a lot TV of like for Star every Trek. like generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bruce Campbell was Jack of Trades on Hercules. Bruce yeah. Campbell was Brisky County Junior. Brisky I mean, County yeah. Junior. he was somewhere in yeah. your youth. But that's somewhere, a, yes, but was. so was Jeffrey Combs. But the problem was, whenever he Where? was in a in a guest appearance, no, no, I'm saying he was in like every every Star Trek from like Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and Enterprise as reoccurring characters. Yeah, I don't watch the Trek. And it was like, but he was under makeup, so he could be like. Uh, multiple characters in one show interesting because he was buried so it's like only if you knew the you know watch the credits you'd be like oh jeffrey Combs is in this but he was in with the star trek people and that must have given him like you know income right it's like the dry 90s and 2000s that can be overly expressive (laughs) under makeup no problem i don't think he does anything now i mean i'm sure he's doing something somewhere but i don't recall the last thing jeffrey has been in I don't know. I mean, beyond seriously, re- yeah, sure. beyond re- I still know what you did last summer. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Frighteners was before that. I yeah, believe, it's kind of nice. He's making his way around the like 
Is he doing the, the, the circuit? Yeah, the con circuit, whatever. Yeah, is he? Yeah, mm-hmm. horror conventions. He's pretty much at every flashback in Chicago. Yeah. So is like uh, Barbara, Barbara Crampton. Yeah. She's there while well, we're recording this. Is uh, Wizard World is going on in Chicago, and Wizard. she's there. And, uh, you know, she's still, like, actively working. She's got, like, at least two new movies out and seems oh, yeah? to be yeah, some recent, having right? this, like, career I, I resurgence. She's a good actress. Yeah, she was in Your Next. That She's was probably good. the most, right, the right, biggest right. release. Oh, yeah? Your Next? Fuck, I didn't even uh, realize. She was the mother. <laughs> Crazy. And uh, what was that That movie I hated? It was oh. We Are Still Here. Oh, I didn't uh, see that. I did not like that, but yeah. she's in it. And she has a new one out called Sun Choke. So Sun She's Choke. still out there Sun working. Sun Choke? Yeah. I mean, her career, like, I mean, I remember Barbara Crampton was, if you've been listening to this show for a long time, uh, I have a love for a movie called Body Double, and she mm. is the hot naked girl who's cheating on Craig Wasson at the beginning of the movie. And that was prior to Reanimator. And then, you know, so she's the sexy girl who will take her clothes off in Reanimator, and then uh, she's the sexy girl in From Beyond. But, like, Stuart Gordon really did kind of give her a career that kind of mm. got her away from being sexy girl all the time i think you know with stuff like this yeah where it's like okay now we're you know we're actually you're getting to act you know and do like a part yeah. you know now jeffrey it's like, Combs is like can i be happy no no jeffrey <laughs> furrow your brow you are not at your best <laughs> god damn you must be disappointed <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i don't know yeah uh, so i mean i kind of like the drama that we have here. i mean it's not bad it's not a bad drama but like i mean the first 40 minutes it's like this is a, a fucking half an hour show about how this guy killed their youngest son and yeah. blinded his daughter with glass oh my god i was just thinking it's like <laughs> if you were in a car accident this in glass would yeah. you start to pick it out yourself because i mean i can't imagine having glass in your eye you'd be like no i'll wait for the paramedics I'd be like, don't touch it don't touch it i can't blink <laughs> and it led to a great moment ow, 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 after, after the accident me. where Just he's like checking me. on everyone. He's like checking his daughter who's got the glass in her eye and then he goes off to look for his son and then he f- like sees something in the road and he goes, no, no. Well, there is no, you were saying, there <laughs> is, is no like the subdued Jeffrey Combs is not necessarily the most interesting Jeffrey no, Combs. The not. the not subtle Jeffrey Combs, because this is a guy who has an alcohol dependency, we learn. And there's a scene where he is But he has him since his son. Nine months. Right. Yes. Like, but he's, he's yes, trying he's, to get he's back on with the Crampton because he's like, come on, damn it. Which we is, haven't had sex in like, like nine months or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She doesn't want to have sex with him because she just blames him. You did. killed my baby you killed boy. our son and blinded our daughter. But yeah, but she says she should say that. She's just like, you're drinking. <laughs> she should just be like, you killed the boy. Okay, all right, all right, I get it. I get it. I understand. I get it. You're not over <laughs> that yet. It's not about the drinking. It's about the boy. Yeah, I get it. hundred <laughs> percent. But he has a scene where, of course, he discovers that in this, uh, you know, castle, there's like this fully stocked, like huge wine yeah. cellar. Yeah. And his acting in this scene. Oh, how do I describe this? His hands <laughs> oh shake God. when he grabs the, the bottle. The, the licking of the lips. That was where oh. I was like, okay, I just didn't know. You're, it's like, you're, is that you're real? Overselling he's, this. He's uh, listening every, a little bit. He's <laughs> Moist. And his yeah. mouth is legit watering for He's good mouth morning. acting. He's got thin lips, Come but he's good at mouth I don't know if that's but maybe good, we're good to la- know, mouth acting. Maybe, but maybe he's been cheating the whole, like, maybe he hasn't really quit. Maybe he's been cheating because he does end up cheating in this movie. Oh, no, I think he quit. Yeah, it he feels like really he really wants it. He really wants it. But I'm like, do people yeah, right, really just, want the taste of liquor? No, they want to get drunk liquor? really bad. Yeah, right. It's the yeah. euphoria of Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I don't really buy his... That's why I would buy the exactly. drinking more. Well, no, I guess you can drink whenever, but I would start drinking after I killed myself. <laughs> like, right, that's not the time to get sober. Yeah, no. that's the time no, to start after, drinking more. I yeah. mean, but then he's trying to get late. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's an interesting dynamic, I guess, to set up for this character, right? Yeah. Because it kind of, you know. It's like, is this character going to redeem himself by the end of the movie, right? You already know there's something that happened in the past, mm. and we have to somehow bring him to some kind of closure for his character arc by the time the story gets over. And you got this dynamic with him and the wife that's like, eh, I guess it's it's interesting. Is it unusual? I don't know. It's a cool dynamic for a movie where usually it's the happy couple right. moving into the new house yeah, and finding that would, out that it's haunted that would seem like if you were having marital problems that seemed like a perfect time to get your thoughts straight is like you go to italy right hey, right yeah. i'll stay here with the blind girl <laughs> <laughs> you figure that out yeah. well, card everybody up and pack them up and let's go yeah. to this even though i hate you i'm gonna go with you to italy yeah yeah because yeah. oh that money 
Mm-hmm. You sell this castle, all this, all this wine down oh, here. That's dude, or something. Yeah. yeah, a drunk dude's a little better than just a drunk husband. <laughs> Did she say what her motivation was? I know at one point he yells yeah. at her like, "What are you even doing here?" Then if you can't yeah. stand me, and you know, yeah, yeah. Well, she just has legitimate questions. She just has complete leverage over him. Yeah, basically, because his yeah. whole thing was I we can have a fresh him. start here, but they never really said why she agreed to go. Right, yeah. and, and then just assume because it's his it. wife, you know, she's yeah. the wife in his, the family, and so she's going where he's going to. Oh, dude, yeah. if I was married, I'd be like, I'll pay you anything, <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> and, oh. Unless the daughter really put up a fight to go. Well, well he's and then she had to go because she went. She did like her dad. Yeah, even though he blinded. She was desperate to keep her family together. Well, yes, yeah. she even prayed about it later. She did. Yeah. Of course, the uh, whole monkey in the wrench here is thrown into effect by the uh, <laughs> the freak <laughs> in the basement. Who? So this guy uh, stop talking about lurk that way. That's our butler. He'll be showing up later. Um, but yeah, so the freak escapes from his bondage by breaking off his oh, thumb. Oh his, my dude, god! That was great. That, that was, was great. Disgusting. That was great. Great in its disgustingness. Yeah, it's just, but it was oh. like, dude. It's a very cringe-worthy moment. It really yes. is. Well, this a, movie is full movie of cringe-worthy, cringe-worthy moments. moments. Yeah. Yes. Maybe that's where Stuart Gordon is excelling in what he does because, like, Reanimator has squirmy, you know, kind of moments from beyond. I don't remember as You know many. where he doesn't, like, do so great at? Handheld shots. That's why I hate his movies when he went over to Europe. Everybody just does handheld, like, they're trying to save as much fucking time in film, so they're just, like, handheld pan everywhere. Just handheld, handheld. And that gets, it's so cheap and looks, I don't know. Yeah, but the, the, the inverse of that is, like, uh, Reanimator, where he'd have, he'd have these lockdown shots where mm-hmm. he, like, puts the entire cast in front of the camera. Yes. Like a stage like a play. play. Yeah. But it's because he came from, what was it, the Organic Theater in Chicago? Yeah. I mean, this is a guy, he put on, like, David Mamet plays. I think yeah. he did Mamet. the premiere of a David Mamet play was his, and uh, what's that guy's name? Not Chaz Palminteri. Is it Chaz Palminteri? Chaz Palminteri. I think he that's came from there, maybe. Uh, William no, that's H. Him. Macy came from there. Yeah. Yeah, they are Joe Mantegna, maybe Joe Mantegna. Yeah, Joe Mantegna, yeah. and he yeah. lights them too. Like uh, there's some stuff in Reanimator, he lights it like a stage play. Yeah. I think more like the morgue scenes when they're doing all that stuff. Yeah, he, he sets it up in the wide shot to show everybody, and he lights it that way too. Well, I think that was his first film coming yeah. off of you know having you know the stage background, yeah. so that's how he was going to do it. But yeah, so this creature gets loose. And once it's loose, it's wandering around the. Uh, well, the, the daughter castle. doesn't. The daughter basically let him out. The daughter goes follows the cat. Oh god, the cat! You can't forget the cat. The daughter follows the cat because the cat's bothering her. Holly's very traumatized by this. Very, like, have you uh, seen how we many cats she posts about? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the cat, Holly? I mean, like if I saw Castle Free kill Superman. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just knew. We knew it was going to happen. We knew. <laughs> we just, I just was hoping that it wouldn't. And, it's, and it's very, like, jarring, too, especially, like, when the moment it happens, because the cat's oh, trying to get away. Well, but at first, I thought it was the <laughs> cheapest thing, because, like, when the cat jumped, I'm like, Stuart Gordon, it is 1990 fucking five. You had a cat jump out at this girl, like, Jesus Christ, what year is this? Like, it is not 82. The cat jumping out does not work. <laughs> yeah, but then... <laughs> But then but the castle freak has lunch, yep. yum, 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 and yum, really, like they yank that. They cat yank back it, in there. and it's oh, so even I felt unnerving. bad. I'm like, I have an orange cat. Are you eating like a burrito? That? I don't like it. It's a taco. Oh. It's a tuna taco. <laughs> in honor of a tuna taco. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yep. Oh, God. oh, the food theme is back at the freak yeah, show. Oh, that I wasn't get... planned. Nope. I just have. Tuna. It's just a happy accident, as they say. Well, the freak, once oh, he's God. loose, I mean, this guy hasn't uh, seen another person before. That's what we're supposed this, to say. No, well, his mom. So I'm like, so did he get his sexual, like, was there at some point in time where he was 12, his mom's beating him with a cat whip, and he's like, oh, shit, dude, look what she's I'm... wearing. Ow! Look what she's wearing. <laughs> oh, shit, mom. Ow! Because how does, like, I don't think you would have a sexuality if you got your dick cut off. He didn't have a dick. Yeah, but he no. has balls. He had his balls, but he had yeah. a dick. That's where the, uh, you know. So if you didn't have a dick and. That's where what? <laughs> Because he was in the it's it's like they right. find out uh, Jeffrey Combs's uh, maid tells him about the story of the Duchess had an American boyfriend who got married, whatever. And then he left her, and she had a kid. 
But what he was locked in the kid died when he was five. five. So that means the that's kid what was they in, told everybody. Yeah. But that means the kid was locked in there since he was five. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody's like, "Hey, where's that kid? Oh, uh, he's dead. Remember? Mm-hmm. What's that crying? Because she dismissed Stop. all of the uh, the staff so she could hide this yeah. horrible secret. Yeah. So I don't know where the kid would get a sexuality. Well, here's what I'm thinking. It's because he's I think- human. Yeah, I think yeah. that as he's growing up, as he's maturing, he starts, you know, exploring. And that's probably when she cut... He didn't cut, have a dick. I'm saying that's probably when she cut it off. Because ah. she caught him She caught him doing it and was like, oh, that's sin. And, you know, cut it that's off. That's a good, good idea. And now, and now, they should have showed that. Because then when he's with the prostitute in the cellar, he's watching them. He's like, he's learning. He's figuring yes. out that's what the, that's what happens. That's what you do. I guess so. I that's can, a good... I see that. That's, that's good. For sure. Mm-hmm. I, was just too, I was just too like, where the fuck? Like, did he... Exactly. Like, when he's getting... <laughs> And that was with Holly's his, horror was he looking corner. at his mom, like discovering a female. <laughs> Holly's you horror know? corner. That would be his first and only female, like well, that's interaction I mean, until yeah. he was like he's he's got to be like what forty? Yeah, I think they said he was like forty five. But yeah. I think yeah. that's why when he creeps into well, he creeps into Jeffrey Combs's bedroom. I think first, right? Is that the first person he sees, or he creeps mm. into the daughter's room? Mm-hmm. And that was where I was like, this is like the first time, like, this is, we're going to end up with like one of these rapey monsters, yeah. right? Where it's like. With Cabinet of Caligari, right? Yeah. I've been <laughs> let loose and I uh, have these urges that have been suppressed for 45 years. And now they're going to come out in right. a, you know, yeah. um, in a too barrage of violence. That nobody would really. Right. And he doesn't have language, apparently. He's just mm-hmm. reduced to grunts. I like I the way kind of that. Here's the thing that, oh, that's probably true. She cut that out too. The, oh. uh, the idea that when you see this monster, because. I think they give it away too early by showing you what's actually happening what? at the very beginning of the movie where you actually see him in the, uh, I know it's kept in shadow, it's but yeah. you see the guy. Yeah. And then, you know, the poster art obviously is like the makeup. The poster show, because yeah. it's like, hey, buy this movie. Like, we have right. no other reason yeah. to hide this it's thing. It's a Castle Look Freak. At <laughs> Look at the cool monster Here's design. Here's Castle Freak. Watch the Castle Freak. But in the Which movie. Which, even if it had the blanket on, I'd fucking watch yeah, it. That's see, still that's, cool, yeah, yeah, when that's he a cool has, look. So he wanders around with this, like, The way he gets on. it, though, he goes <laughs> in, like, it, it's the funniest thing. He goes in there, and he, it's the daughter's room, and he pulls the blanket off of her, and he's hovering over and then she wakes up and screams and he's like ah and then he just like grabs the blanket and the sheets and just runs away and he knows he's, ugly. he's like ah. but that led to one of the best scenes in the but movie was it before where... that or after that where he looks in the mirror and sees himself I think after, after he leaves he goes and sees himself in the... yeah. or that's the next morning. and that's the that is the one scene from the actual short story so that is loose loose loosely yeah because because she because then she was the one that's like oh he broke the mirror oh. because there's a person here yeah, yeah. Was, she kept, was, yeah, yeah. She kept saying that there's somebody here. There's yeah. someone here. Well, when was the scene where Jeffrey Combs is actually looking around through the house and he's going, you know, of course, they've got sheets over all the furniture and he creeps through the room. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. No, that was the most Scooby-Doo moment. That, I'm so, so glad you mentioned Sean that. Sean called it. I called Sean it. Like, called as it. he's walking, I'm like, it would be great right now if he was sitting under a sheet Dude. like a chair. And <laughs> sure enough, as they soon go as I saw yes. that, as soon as I saw that chair, I was like, they can't fucking know. That'd be so <laughs> stupid. Once it again, not awesome. only not only awesome. where, where would this guy get any sort of like a sexual psychosis or sexual right. like whatever? But and then like where would how would he mimic a fucking chair? Like, I know. Perfect. <laughs> oh, like going scoob. It was great. Let's get out of here, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> row. Oh. He's got a pretty oh. cool look once he actually wears the sheet. He kind of looks yeah, like he's mommy. all like, yeah, he's yeah. got one eye like, almost It's like a modern day phantom or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Phantom of the Opera or right. some shit. Covered almost up like above a cape. the nose. You can still see his deformed yeah. mouth. Yeah, it almost has eye. like a cape. I started drawing it last night. I was like, that's kind of striking, but it's yeah. hard it to is. Get to... Especially when later on he gets the blood like all down his front and everything. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I think it's because the sheet is like tapered to his head. Too. Yeah. It's not like a flowing like like robe down. kind of thing. Right. It's tied down. It's like Zorro. So it gives him a. Mm-hmm. a but like, why round wouldn't you? Head. My question about Robert, Robert Crampton, because the daughter knows there's somebody in there. Yeah. The, before before the guy even escapes from the, the, the door, the daughter hears him when she follows the cat, and then she's like, there's someone in this castle. And they're like, shut up, you're 12. <laughs> there's someone in this castle, I shut up. I think it's because Barbara Crampton, she, not only is she now blind, so they feel like they have to baby her more, I think she is looking to victimize her even more to make him feel more guilty for what he's done. Maybe. Also, yes. That's maybe. what I think. So I just thought Holly's that maybe... The, it's a good novelization. <laughs> Deconstructing this movie. Yeah. But I thought maybe it was because that the girl, or because she's newly blind, right? So she's only been blind for a year, and she's like, I hear something, there's someone here, and the adults are telling her, 
it's your imagination. Yeah. And she's maybe doubting, you know, <laughs> you're her blind, own senses. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're right. I am blind. You Shit, don't see maybe I people. didn't. Yeah. 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 Maybe there isn't someone here. Yeah. You like Holly's better. I, I would. I, I, I would. No, I, I think it's both. Honestly, I think it's both. Yeah, I would just trust her. Be like, she's blind. Her senses are heightened. <laughs> I will listen to her ass. She she's scratching. like Daredevil. Yeah. yeah, she's exactly like a superhero. She's better than a seeing eye dog. Like, listen, she's a do non-seeing something? daughter. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, the uh, the guilt, the constant barrage from his wife, mm. and the uh, pent up nine months of uh, sexual, sexual starvation has, mm. leads Jeffrey Combs to the city. Before that. I'm sorry. Before that. Sorry. Two to talk about. Yeah, go ahead. Ah. They search because they're like, um, God damn it, what? Happened? Well, the mirror breaks. And yeah. so Jeffrey Combs is like, I'm going to search the castle. Like, because, I mean, maybe the thing warped, but maybe my blind daughter's right. Maybe, you know, maybe there is somebody here. So let's check it out. And I really like this scene because I did not see it coming. When he finds the grave of the oh, of, yeah, the, under, of the, the dead ancestor, uh, and it looks exactly like his son. So, oh, like, yeah, yeah. there you are, face to face with your dead son's picture in a way. It's not, but in yeah. a way, I thought, I thought, I was like, that's fucking touching, dude. Well, it was cool, too, because the creature, we're calling him the creature. He's the, the freak. Poor, the poor, the, yeah, the freak. Uh, he's there to witness this. And so I was sitting there going, like, oh, this is what you're going to set up, like, the... Will the freak see Jeffrey Combs as a father type figure if Jeffrey Combs is seeing what the creature perceives as himself, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's if he's aware that that's his grave. He's never been out of his room, so maybe this is all bullshit. But if he knows that that's a picture of him as a boy, <clears throat> then like he sees Jeffrey Combs' attention to that picture, then it's like, well, but I thought like- the idea that he's like. My fucking father ran away. And right. He had your fucking family, asshole. You know, I, yeah. I thought he'd think of it more like that. Like, God damn it, you have this cozy life. I'm a freak in a castle. Yeah. Who knows? The uh, mother may have been yelling that at him as she was beating him. Like, your father left us. <laughs> he went to America. Bastard. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, very possible. Very possible. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. I just don't know how you would hide that for 40 years. I mean, she. They said she never left the castle. Yeah, for those and they years. said that they, well, they lost their fortune, and she, and she dismissed all the well, staff. Because everybody knows, I like they hear him crying at night. I mean, oh, so yeah, obviously yeah. it has to be like, you know, yeah. enough. They say the castle is haunted. Yeah, they say it. I don't. Say it. But <laughs> yeah, well, Jeffrey Combs eventually ends up in the arms of a prostitute. Is that where we're headed with this? The, I mean, uh, yeah, he he's so distraught break. over seeing. Well, I like how the picture's gone too. When yeah, it's he gone. Comes back. So, because yeah. then right you know here. Freak took it. Because first he contemplates suicide. Yeah, and that's then he a, rules that's that out. That's the turning point. He right? rules that out. Because the wife fucking says some mean shit to him. She does. Yeah. She's yeah. like, and she blames him. She's like, no, you did. You killed our son and you blinded our daughter. But even from like and a he's like, do you writing? wish it was me? Yes. And she's, oh, she said something. She's like, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I wish it was you. <laughs> I wish it was you too. I'm or he kill said myself it, to yeah. make you feel bad. Wait a second. This yeah, at that stupid. point, he goes up to the, the roof and he's going to jump off. From a screenwriting point of view, I kind of appreciated this uh, moment in the script because it was like, you know, I mean, only later, <laughs> you know, yeah. does this, but it kind of yeah. rhymed back to it. I'm like, eh, okay, all right. Yeah, I kind of like where you're going with this mm-hmm. as far as tying points in the story together. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he ends up, you know, taking this prostitute Goes to the home. bar and gets gets Jeffrey Combs drunk. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and that's this when leads... he gets peak Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> yeah, and this leads to our uh, big. Uh, this is where the gore really starts to set in in the movie, and this is where like the movie earns its title as a horror film. Mm-hmm. I, I think guess. just because it's well, because it's like squeamish kind of horror. Basically, the the creature yeah. watches Jeffrey Combs with the prostitute. You know, first of all, you drink, and then you uh, you know kiss her on the boobs, and then you eat her out. Apparently. Yeah. And the creature abducts yeah, her that, and man? tries to like, do all of these things. This is yeah. how humans mate, or this is what you're supposed this to do. This is what you do. Except he's a little well, he thinks uh, Jeffrey, uh, Combs, <laughs> Jeffrey <laughs> Combs got to like dive right in. I was like, Jesus Christ. That's wasn't it, wasn't saying, it way more graphic than you expected it to be? You're man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just like, get up. I mean, yeah. I don't have anything against smut, really. Right, but it was just kind of like, oh, okay. It was kind of out of nowhere. It was just kind of like, damn. Oh, shit. Oh, he's going <laughs> to You can't Jeffrey see Jeffrey Combs, like, couldn't act that. He's like, how many times should I lick this? <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
That's what I was always curious. Yeah, like, it was something like he had a like my nose is in there. Fuck, yeah. like say cut, dude. Right? No, I think he was uh, going no. for the, the the below the belly button region. But right. yeah, she's Just got her push your face into that. Her leg up on his shoulder. Yeah, and it's like Bush? You, this has to be the unrated. That's, you, gotta be. that's what I thought. That's got to be. Is that a hard day at work? I suppose what? <laughs> for Jeffrey Combs, like hey, I got to do this well, again. She's not uh, American. <laughs> not to say like all oh, crudded up Europeans. I'm just saying I don't. I don't uh, like. How would you know? Like I'd be like, Ugh. yeah, that's yeah, an awkward. Know, that's an wanted... awkward scene to shoot I all assume. around. Yeah. Not even, uh, well, I guess I'm kind of a germaphobe. I guess whatever. Like I don't want to get an STD to make your stupid castle freak. I mean, movie. I wouldn't either. <laughs> like, like, you know, like. Uh, can't you cut There's, like you fade? Space right. involved. Can I just here go below the just camera? Head movements and all. Right. Cameras behind. So uh, no, that was like looking to the side, and Jeffrey Gomes is like, "Say cut, say cut." <laughs> <laughs> it was, dude. I saw. I was like, "Jesus Christ, what is this a portal?" He's like, I'm not method. I think that was I supposed to be the camera. This. The camera is supposed to tilt up, so you just see the top of his head. But right. the camera right. operator didn't move up early enough and that's why it looked a little awkward like he's down there going like okay, but then yeah I'll. when then when castle free because like jeffrey combs is just i love how when she hands out her hand you know he didn't have any idea that she was right. a prostitute like, hey, what the oh what yes the of course i see <laughs> no, he did at the beginning oh the oldest the international language because he knew she was a prostitute no no but then, no, no because then when she, no, the when she hands out the money he's just like oh uh, like you i know. think he thought the international language was him being hit on like uh, yeah it's like oh love like because like, how many like noir films and everything do you like do you have a light yeah like it's kind of the he didn't thing, realize you know? she was a hoa uh, Oh. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was a little more on the ball than that. No, but there's a cop. Bad. There's like a police dude who, who is, is like has a kid with the her father. Yeah. yeah, which kind of comes becomes sad at the very I end. Of guess the movie. I was just like, why is this here? Why is this part of this movie? Just so the cop can give him a this hard is a time. Serious like, drama, Travis. Where is that girl? And yeah, I know. It's a serious stuff. drama in a movie called Castle Freak. I think mm-hmm. that's, I think There's that's more my... drama from a movie called Castle Freak than I was expecting. Yeah! A lot more. I did that's expect they it needed to be worse something. than it was, but, yeah. They had probably, I like, it too, but it was just like, what? But the gore, gentlemen. The gore. He the bites her nipple go. off. Clean the fuck off. No, that's he right. pulls it. It's that's a little chewy. Yeah. And right. Yeah. And it looks... Stringy. It looked complete before because it's in one shot where okay. you see the kind of the whole thing, and then the, he crosses over and then bites it off, and the skin comes with it, and everything. I'm just like, oh, it that's was, pretty good it effect. Because I'm just like, oh, but I don't because that was the infamous scene that I'd heard about for 20 years. Did but it that's satisfy just, that's my that's good imaginings? But that's satisfied? just because he's mad, right? <laughs> well, you wanted to see the movie because then, of that scene. I got what I wanted, but that's just because he's mad, right? I mean, he would have just been nice and fucked her, but she's just like. <laughs> I don't think he understood. I don't think he did. Well, he didn't no, understand he's the restraint. Nice to the daughter. No, I don't think he. I don't think, I think he's not was, trying to eat a, her. I think that was tits about off. to go bad. Think, but he, he was getting he was up. getting nibbly with her. Right. You you think? Think? Like, I yeah, think he's he working up to it, but because he saw Jeffrey Combs specifically with that woman, he's like, "Oh, I can do this to you." But he doesn't know like restraint or like yeah. how far to go. But with yeah, that. what's with Stuart Gordon eating puss? What the fuck is that guy's problem? Well, it's just he goes for like oh, an, I know it. He's an extreme. <laughs> like extreme. all of his movies, I think, have like a. I'm trying. Uh, robot jocks maybe <laughs> was standing in space truckers right now, but uh, the, his horror movies have like these kind of extremely uncomfortable sexual. Uh, mm. It's like the, there's a threat of sexual violence. I guess in his movies, a threat, which kind of, or yeah, or he actually goes into it. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking like, animator. well, even Dagon, which isn't in the story, but he has the lead girl like stripped naked, hung over this pit. And then the deity comes up and like takes her below and has sex with her. We don't see it, but that happens. Like she gets fucked by Dagon. And it's like, what? That possible? The He's hell? like a fucking island. I know. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't even know what Dagon <laughs> is. Fucking Stuart Gordon. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's always something, and then the infamous scene in Reanimator where Barbara Crampton receives head from a severed head from a head. I guess yeah. somehow that's my line. <laughs> this is where you cross like, the line. Where it is. I like uh, I like I spit on your grave because you get to see you get to see a woman gets victimized, but then she gets to get revenge. She goes out and kills all those people. Right. Miss Forty Five, she gets victimized, then she gets revenge. I need that she gets revenge. I can't just have like, that's it. You're just gonna fucking eat her fucking 
the monster actually does eat, eat her Ooh. out literally. It's like that's not like Stuart Gordon. Yeah, it really. We don't is. actually Shame see this. You, we sir. see the aftermath see enough. of that, but it is cringeworthy enough Ooh. to. But I mean, again, I think that's what he's trying to push the boundary yeah. of good taste because he did it in Reanimator and that right. made that movie famous. Yeah. So then he's going to try and bring this into like every subsequent movie that he does to be outrageous in that way. It had an effect on two 10 year olds standing in the street 20 years ago. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. But is it horrifying? I suppose. I mean, we're watching it tonight Kinda, and yeah. like you don't usually see that <laughs> Ooh, yeah. get anything go that far. Kind of like, like the Jesus. eating of the boo more than the eating of the vagina. That's yeah, why I thought, that's... like, this guy's going too far. Why does he just eat her boobs? Yeah, but wait, <laughs> like, didn't this happen in, uh, in American Psycho? That was a mainstream R-rated film, but I'm pretty sure a there movie? was uh, no uh, There's... Uh, carpet munching. Chainsaw? That's... I don't know. Oh. I don't remember American Psycho. I don't think okay, so. what's in the this, book? This, so maybe that's book. why yeah. I don't remember <laughs> if that was There's in There's a the... lot of sex and violence in that movie, but never, Suck like... The no. Suck the <laughs> yeah. So Maybe it's like under a sheet or something. It, well, it is because the one screams and he comes up and his mouth's all yes. bloody. Yeah, yes. so it does oh, happen. That's, that's that. the movie. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's where I draw my line. Yeah, it is kind of like I don't oh, like to oh. bite that. It's like eh, what? Come on. So wait, so are you saying that this is where horror movies get uncomfortable? You've seen so many horror this movies, but this scary. is where. But no, but that's it's it's. I've always been a gore guy, dude. You put, stick a. a Put a stick through someone's eye, fucking jab something in the ear. Seat. Like I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Because the fucking real cat shit doesn't scare me, you yeah. know. That's Period. So I do need like I do need body torture, like body damage yeah. for me to get like squirmy. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. For yeah. sure. This is a good example of that then? Uh I mean this, this and I mean the boob the boob, yeah, because you got to see the gore. You know, that's what I'm, that's the thing I dread. I dread the, oh my God, he's biting her boot. Uh, he's pulling the flesh back. Uh, <laughs> We're seeing too much, too much. I cut, need to, damn I it. need to, yeah, I need You're not going to cut, oh shit. But then when you just like cut to like him, like between her legs, like, and then like looking up, I'm like, ew. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like, it wasn't done to like torture you. It wasn't even, you know, because at least even in Reanimator, you have the dread of seeing the dude like pick up his own head and head for her crotch, right? So that's like the dread of seeing it coming, seeing it coming. You need that for the horror. If you just have the guy, ah, I've been doing this now for 10 minutes and she's passed out from the blood loss. It's like, eh, that's not horror because I didn't get to see a like going down, going down. No, I can't believe it. The way the boob was shot. Yeah. To dissect this fucking life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to dissect uh, what makes a, uh, hair, a horror scene a horror right, scene. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. And it just <laughs> and her reaction later on, like when the uh, what is it? The old lady comes down. Yeah, and then she gets beat with a chain. She gets beat with a chain, but even when like the prostitute, she's like got her head slumped to the side, and when she looks over and sees him, and her like hand goes up, she's like, oh, like she did very well in that part because that's the part that's like scared me. Just like the look on her face mm. when she's looking at him. She's all pale. Like, yeah. yeah. Like bags under the eyes. She's, oh, she's barely clinging to life. It's like, oof. Yeah. That did it for me. So we're saying, folks, it sounds like, well, Holly looks just mortified that we're having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we're saying that this is an effective moment. Or are these, th this uh, movie contains uh, I was affected, effective yes. horror movie moments. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was grossed out. Yeah, we were all affected. All right. <laughs> What happened after that? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, after that, it's like, let's stop the movie. <laughs> the cop, uh, the cop thinks that Jeffrey Combs right. killed the old right. woman and his prostitute back, lover. Back to oh. the drama. Back to the drama. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. case of missing or uh, mistaken identity. Jeffrey Combs yeah. is going to jail. He can, but he's like, no, there's a crazy person. Because this is the moment where Jeffrey Combs figures out that he couldn't have actually done it. And he figures out that there is an actual dude in right. the house. And his wife and kid are in the house. And we have to save them somehow, even though he is being hauled away by the Italian right. cop. There was a meeting with a sleazy lawyer. That sleazy guy was Tyler. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it was. He's <laughs> like, eh. That's I'm going man. to raise your fee. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, awesome. Your case then we talk about the new financial <laughs> rage. There we go. <laughs> yeah. But it is a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But it is a pretty big leap to like. Sure, I screw with her too. Everyone does. Hey, we all do. <laughs> Just to tell you the truth, eh? There is a huge leap that they don't explain from like there's somebody in the castle to like 
the boy never died. It's like, what? How the fuck? Just because the old woman told you a story about the American, like, how do you, th- why would you think it's the boy? Like, I mean, yeah, he will, because the picture's gone, maybe, pictures, or like. The picture's gone. I mean. Well, he finds the whip that she's been using, and I guess, yeah, like, Jeffrey Combs doesn't yeah, put it whip. together that she may be using this on herself. Right? No. Like any sane person would think. No. <laughs> yeah. So he says, what was she using the whip for? And then puts it together with like. She must have kept the five-year-old alive for 40 years whipping him with the. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> what um, the fuck, Jeffrey Cole? Like, you really got this out of nowhere. But he Genius. really he really seals it once he busts in, you know, to the casket and there's no body there. Right. So for that's sure. what seals Full it. But rocks. Yeah. He has an idea before that. And then right. that's the moment. Where I just he's don't like know where he would got that idea. Right, where he's all in. So, I would yeah. just be like, there's just some person. In the cat, like I would not ever think, like, don't you right. see it? So, you castle, like, <laughs> it's a castle with 150 rooms in it. You wouldn't think, like, some weirdo decided to camp out and kill mm-hmm. people. Like, yeah. that's also an explanation, or like, why it's like there's there must be no dungeon in this like castle, right? Well, that's where it's like, that's where the guy's was, at, though, isn't yeah, it? Is it a cells. dungeon? It's just kind of like a uh, yeah, but it feels like it's like it's got it a feels like a, like a lock, yeah, but there's it, but cells, it, but right, it has yeah. cells, it's got a room that is just a room with a lock on it. With chains to the wall. That's I think there dungeon. are several rooms. He was just. I guess that's where room. I want a Hollywood dungeon, and not like, yeah, this is my Torches dungeon. On the wall. This is my castle. It's like ah, God a, damn a stretching it. rack in the corner. Yeah, yeah I wanted a. Where's well, my wonder, Hollywood castle? And I wonder if those were sets, or is that really in that castle? I feel it's like old it's enough. In the castle. I, mean, yeah, you never know. I feel like yeah, it was all there. He's like, I have an idea. We should use all this. Yeah, there's like <laughs> one. I mean, they they use like a white light for the whole movie, right? They're just like, let's put this white. No, they have some blue lights, but. Yeah. In the rainy season. Actually, yeah, I should have looked at that. That would have told you if it was a set or not, how it was lit in the dungeons. I always thought, because he goes down and there's, like, regular flip light switches. Yeah. Like, in the dungeon and everything. Like, it's a little weird, but then you can tell it's kind of like... It's but I like that, because that was... To me, that was at least good lighting. Like, having a character, like, turn on a light and walk forward so he's silhouetted just with the bat. I'm like, that's cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like people don't allow for their characters to go into darkness they anymore. They don't. That's and I a, like that. Yeah, I saw. I was watching something the other day. I'm just like, they let these people go into dark, and you don't see that often. No. You gotta have, like, a gray light. Like, they can, the characters are supposed to be in pitch black, but you see everything, and somehow they right. can see everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I get it. Hollywood pitch black. Yeah. Hollywood. We can still make this out. We'll see. Well, eventually this ends up trapping the blind daughter and the mother in the castle with the freak. And so the and concern the is, like, Italian what's going to happen with the two women and the freak now running amok? He's already killed some two women in the basement, and now he's got free reign of the house. Yes. And he, that's right, he kills the two protector cops that yes. are installed. It's always two shitty cops who are just hanging out. Yeah, the whole, you go get me a glass of water. Like, yeah. Your generic, like, horror movie shit. Yeah, yeah, because it's like it's your Some house. You can't green. go get your own fucking hey, water, but what, on the second being one, being protected. Yeah, I'm making sure no one's here to kill you. <laughs> or no, yeah, are, no, right? are they? That's are they just? The are they just there to make sure they don't run away? I think so. Because it's more to make they're sure they suspect away. of. Uh, yes. Well, they're not suspect, but they could be. They have to uh, give their statements. State, yeah. To, I think uh, it's more that than yeah. protecting you from something. So they yeah, they don't think that there's anything actually there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not expecting some. It's just weird because you'd be like, hey, make a statement at the. Police, uh, you know, station. Yeah, and then Not you like you stay in your castle. We'll have two guards here. <laughs> For next I think they, were, okay. they were taking uh, Jeffrey Combs down. They're like, we're going to deal with him now. We'll see you in the morning. Maybe. Yeah, but clearly. I mean, that's when movies just want things to be said. They can only you know, just question like, one person at a time. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's, well, there, it's an it's, Italian it's Italy. station. There's like two rooms. We're sorry. <laughs> it's Italy. Yeah. yeah. We don't know anything about Italy. But what, I, what we do know about <laughs> Italy is from the movies. <laughs> yeah. All <laughs> the Lucio Fulci films. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this Very does funny. actually set up like a uh, a little bit of um, okay, so you know, I think maybe that the the violent scene against the prostitute is there to for now when the guy is loose in the castle and you know that the daughter is defenseless, she's blind mm. in the uh, in the room you know in the house it's like that's to set up you know because you've seen how extreme his behavior is now you're concerned about her you're like oh shit i don't want that to happen to this girl yeah. and you know this is so he ends up abducting her and taking her down to his you know but there's like the mm-hmm. stalking through the house and you know taking yes. her down to the dungeon so you're worried that like i've seen this before am i going to end up seeing this again is this going to happen to her i thought that was effective it like actually it worked that way i think so you know and that's why i was wondering if that was the intention of doing going so extreme right it's you like know? oh shit 
if he does that to them, what's he going to do to the daughter? Yeah, it was so strange because it was the one horror scene of the whole movie. Yeah, I thought, yeah. but I thought the this... whole hour and a half that was the one horror scene. I thought this was also like with the daughter was like I don't know. It was at least the suspense was working. You know what I mean? And, they, and then he gets to get uh, a bit bitey. Well, I'm just yeah. saying that's yeah. why <laughs> that scene was so extreme is because that was the only horror scene. It had to be extreme to call it a horror movie. <laughs> they needed one like extreme scene. It's very extreme and very memorable. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, and Barbara Crampton ends up coming in and you know saving the day by offering herself to the beast. Yeah. At this point, well, I Points mean, this was this is also knife. like a, I guess you know if you have this hideous creature, and he's embarrassed of himself because he says you know he thinks that he's ugly. Mm-hmm. And he takes this girl down there, and apparently this is the only first time that he realizes that she's blind. Yes. So he takes his robe off, mm. you know, which he's been running around. And this is the first time we actually get to see the makeup. So the, you know, the 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 cat's been out of the bag because of the poster art. Yeah. You know? yes. But this is in the movie, like, where you actually get to see what the castle freak actually looks like for the first time. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was like, and then he's with a girl who can't see him. They didn't play anything on the dynamic of like, would she like, you know, respond to him in some kind of way? Right. Cause she's just afraid for her life. He grunts and all this stuff as he's trying to poke and prod at her, you know? So it's like basically really uncomfortable when you're watching. Extremely. Very. And he, he looks, <laughs> Holly was not having a no, good time. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like what a... you're supposed, that's what a horror movie's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Like, and maybe this is the thing. And this is maybe a little wrap up thing here, but just the, uh, the idea that like the thing, why this doesn't feel like a Stuart Gordon film to me is because Stuart Gordon movies usually have this layer of subversive humor or like black humor. Yeah. Right. Mm. That this movie doesn't have, this is like a straight horror movie. Drama and horror. Drama and horror. And so I guess that's why, like, some some of this stuff see, feels harder edged because it doesn't have the safety net of comedy. Right. To it's kind building of cushion tension, the right, or letting the tension out with the comedy at any point. It doesn't have that. Right. You're not letting anything go at any point, unless it's yeah. unintentional stuff, like, it's, you know, him grabbing a sheet and running away. Woo. The lawyer with his one-liners. Like, oh, the lawyer was a little bit of a... Huh. But even then, that was quick. You yeah. Know? That was quick and in one scene, yeah. It's kind of just... You, builds all up in here and you're just kind of left with that uneasy kind of ugh feeling mm-hmm. through like especially from that scene on you're just like ugh. yeah and i thought it resolved the jeffrey combs uh you know like his somehow he has to redeem Redemption, himself yes and because it's already been foreshadowed like you know the, the it ends with the, i mean i suppose a cliched moment up on the roof in the rain the girls oh, are God, cornered right. by the fight. castle freak but that's what i thought i was like oh my god it's genius having them have a. Uh... He's carrying around the chain with the, like, attached to it. Because, I mean, he only bites his thumb off of one hand. Right. So he's constantly got the chain connected to the other. Yeah. Arm. And the other, I was like, awesome. That's how you kill the monster at the end. That's great. He's already got the fucking chain. But I thought he was going to choke him or something. No. I would have went with that. No. But I like him, like, attaching. He's like, I have to save them. I can redeem myself. And then he just swan dives off the thing and yeah. takes the monster Fucking leaves him. his you... fucking blind yeah. daughter fatherless with a fucking But bitch. he just saved her he life. Saved them. She could have choked him with the chain and had a father. (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't an option, Travis. It was. It totally was an option. He (laughs) He took the time to like put it on his wrist and come up with like, I'll kill myself. But that was that was set up earlier, wasn't it? It's like he he saw that as a good way to like I can I can protect these women and make up for the damage that I've done to both of them by removing both myself and the creature. Yes, he realizes he's from the equation. Exactly. Yeah. So he's saving them from him also. Yeah. Yes. He is the castle freak. Uh, <laughs> wow, That's wow. a nice place in it, but I don't buy that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to cut out the I don't buy I'm that just part. Say, <laughs> no, you you right live there. with it, God damn it. You live with it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just don't like it. I'm trying guess. to get That's deep, my, God damn it. Yeah, Support just me. Don't, just don't like that he... I don't want to see... Yeah. Your hero dies at the end of the movie. I guess so. Is he a hero, though? Protagonist. Uh, That's my yeah, problem with the hero? fucking movie. I mean, I don't give a shit about the characters. He Sorry. does in the end. He Sorry. is the heroic figure, right? Like before he, you know, he doesn't immediately go to. I'm going to chain myself to this, you know, right. thing and throw yeah. myself off. He actually does do the, you know, manly protector thing and jumps in there and starts beating the fuck out of this mm-hmm. creature, which I believe gets the upper hand on him, but I can't remember yes, I how. Think it bites it. him and yeah. does it bite him. No, or he, or he gets, he gets the whip. 
He whips him at one point. Oh, he whips Jeffrey Combs he, down. He, and, uh, like, he well, does, yeah. It goes yeah. for him. Yeah. He gets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The device that he was used to be tortured with. Yes. He turns it on his For some reason, he's got freakish strength, even though he's been in that cell for 40 years. Hey, man, he could sit in a position of a chair. He's got, like, strong legs somehow. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. Like he's, he even knows what a chair is. Like, no one understands, <laughs> like, what a fucking five-year-old would know sitting in a one room for 40 years. Nothing. Oh, he's so glad. It would, I don't think it would he have a sex. around in that, uh, in that uh, the mansion after he got out, like, hours? Minutes? I just don't think it would have a sex drive. You need a, me- a man needs a mental image in his head of a naked girl to have a sex drive. You but need, I think you, maybe he got it just in like, that scene. Watching Jeffrey comes with He doesn't have a dick. It does. Well, before that, balls. he goes into the daughter's room. I don't care right? if you have balls. He sees the if, daughter. Prior. If no blood is rushing to a penis to make takes... hard, you wouldn't know what to do with it. Like, it just, I don't buy it. He Sorry. Just explode. I think Doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm thinking that it's there. Somehow, you just don't know how to express it. And, mm. you know, yeah, somehow, like, physiologically, it's. Yeah. 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 He's probably yeah. turned on by, like, concrete blocks. I mean, probably. <laughs> just that scraping. Yeah. So he just rubs up against him. Like, the feeling, like, the feeling ah! of it. Oh, you guys can't see Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Miming this right now. Uh, it's uh, pretty wonderful. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Concrete blocks, man. Think no. Concrete blocks. <laughs> Just made for a perverted movie. <laughs> oh, very much so. Uh, I think that's uh, that's Castle Freak. So that's Castle Freak. So. so that means we're going to summon Igor, our mail guy, and then uh, read some of your comments. And hey, if you want to write to us, all you got to do is find us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can write to us, Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com, or you can get a hold of us on Twitter, where we are. At Sat Freak Show. At Sat Freak Show. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. And thank you, Igor. Thank you. I don't think he likes this movie. It hit no, a little is it too close to home. Yeah, hey, oh shit, it Martin, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that was not insensitive nice, to Igor. Yeah. Oh my god. He just needs some alone him. time. <laughs> make it up to him. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, our first comment comes to us from uh, Bobette Geor- Georgi. Bobette. Bobette's writing about uh, The Resurrected, the last uh, H.P. Lovecraft movie that uh, we watched here. Yeah, because it appears to be an every other week thing. That's right. Yeah, we may as well just keep this I going. hate them all. And says, uh, well, Bobette's just asking if there's any background on how the creature effects were made on Badly. the resurrect. Yes. What the? They were not bad at all. In the resurrect? Not for fucking 80. It was the one that was like the washed up on the shore. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. yeah. I expressed my uh, like for those it uh, looked creature like effects in our dead. podcast. It did. But it I don't know who the guy was. Did we Todd find Masters. Masters, yes, that's it. Who's still working. But I did some internet research, Bobette, and I could not really find anything. You'd have to probably go back to an old Fangoria or something. Right. I was going to say, I don't believe there's much on that one. Essentially, essentially, since you said it was like a lost movie. Like yeah. Nobody's seen this movie. I, I can't can even find interviews not, with yeah. Dan O'Bannon like yeah. from the time. So, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm sure Fangoria was on set at some point mm-hmm. and probably, probably in an probably old. You could probably pull from other work by Todd Masters to see what he's done. Yeah, lots of latex, I'm guessing. Yeah. Molding, Mm, you know, that kind of thing. Animatronics. And Bryce Krakenberg writes to us. Now, release the Krakenberg. (laughs) (laughs) I always like this, like, damn it, Krakenberg. (laughs) Well, here's the thing, Sean. (laughs) Many moons ago, uh, Bryce wrote to us and said uh, that he found our Puppet Master review and has been loving the full moon and Stuart Gordon Ah. and Jeffrey Combs stuff. And he said, any chance of a Castle Freak review? Because that movie scared me to death as a kid. This was back in December. Damn. You didn't even know you were fulfilling a dream. But we have made someone's dream come true. I'm so glad. Tonight, Bryce, it's happening. So hopefully you're still listening. It's all happening. (laughs) Eight months later. Bryce writes in. Oh. He says, it's awesome that you're doing Castle Freak. You can't wait to hear it. All I know is that it's based off a Lovecraft story, and my uncle let me watch it when I was young, and it scared the tar out of me. I don't think I slept for a week. Your right. uncle is irresponsible. An oh. awesome oh. uncle. That's oh, an yeah. awesome That's uncle. Cool That's uncle. what you do. <laughs> right? It's not, your, it's not your fucking kid. Be like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> my, my aunt used to come over for horror movie nights with us. It was great. 
<laughs> All right, so now it's time for wrap ups. Do you hear that sound? Oh my god. Oh no. The hour has come, sirs. So wrap ups where we each get to go around the room and give our opinion of the movie we watch begins with Travis. Me. Um, I never liked this movie. Just How many because times have you seen it? Like, have you seen it? This often? is my first full viewing because I could just tell. It's like I don't give a fuck about this drunk dude. I don't give a. This is my problem with horror movies when it's like we got really nothing scary to put in this. So let's make it a drama about how like. Or every horror movie needs to be about how, like, you suffered a tragedy, but now you're going to go through an even, like, more, like, whatever, more tragic set of events. That way you can learn to overcome your past tragedy. Like, And it's like, I don't give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. I don't know if I'm, like... I know we've asked you this before, but just for tonight's episode, what's your favorite horror movie? What movie does it the best? (sighs) The, The type of movie that you like, the type of horror movie that you like. So the folks out there have the context for right, why, right. why, like, why oh, everything else like sucks. This, <laughs> no, I just don't. I just <laughs> Friday the thirteenth. I mean Friday thirteenth, American Woman Friend London. Friday night. American yeah. Word. Like, I mean, one word. American Woman Friend London. American Woman Friend London. Return on debt. I just need. I just don't want. Like I don't know. I just. I just don't want to be dragged down with characters right from the get go. Like I, that's not what I watch a movie for. I do kind of want to be entertained. I don't want to be like, oh boy, like we got to go through this conversation. We got to like, and I don't know if that's supposed to be like the horrors for the guys and the dramas for the lady. It was like, but I don't give a shit. Um, so, but I mean, saying, I mean, I talked about how I really liked the whole, like when he saw his, his dead son or the, the picture of the ancestor that looked like a boy made him cry. I thought that was really touching. So there was elements of that. I liked, I just hate hate that. You got to go through the same tropes of you know, the whole, like, can't we just have sex? No, you know why I, you know, it's just like, ah, damn it. I hate seeing this movie over and over and over again, dude. So many horror movies have to have, well, here's your tragic, your characters have already been through something tragic, you're going to live through this to get through this tragic, and I guess, oh, here, it's like a built-in story arc, I guess. It's just a built-in story arc. It's like, we're not really going to have anything happen, so they're just going to be like, I remember this thing. Oh my God, I'm going through this thing. Now I can deal with that thing. It's just like, I don't give a shit. I just don't. I didn't care. Like, even in, like, big movies like Gravity, like, I don't give a shit if they have a tragic past that this new thing, eh, it just bores the shit out of me. Um, Especially, like I said, like, what, 44 minutes? 40, it takes 45? Yeah, you see some, like, Castle Freak hands. But 40 minutes until the Castle Freak goes out just to eat a boob or whatever the fuck. I'm just like, ugh. I don't know. You could like edit the shit out of this movie. This should be an episode of Tales from the Dark Siders. So these should be 22 minutes or 40. Because I like the, you know, I don't mind the story. I like how it's not like a real, it's not a real ham fisted story. It's just that classic kind of like, ah, you know, these people were here. Someone in this house should be dead, but they're not, you know, whatever. Mm. You see this in, in fucking so many horror movies that it's an awesome trope, I guess, but. I just don't want all this. Yeah, I just don't want all the drama, and I don't want to like. I don't give a shit if Stuart Gordon's saving money, like shooting wherever he shoots. He needs to stop it. He just needs those. His movies just look cheap past a certain point. Like pretty much nothing in America just looks cheap. Seen like his newer stuff, like King of the Ants, and uh, what was it, Edward or no Edmund or the one with William H Macy, and then there was the one stuck. The guy gets or the girl gets. gets No, the guy gets stuck in the car windshield. The girl just drives home with him. Oh, Stephen Ray and uh, American Beauty. No, I gave up on Stephen Ray. He stopped doing horror. He started doing more like. He's like, there's no more H.P. Lovecraft. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I personally don't like this movie. I wouldn't even recommend it because I if I I think if I recommended this to somebody, they'd be like, dude, it was fucking boring. Then somebody like ate her pussy out. This is disgusting. You know, it's just like okay, you win. (laughs) <laughs> like I just couldn't like no argument I mean, against that. This yeah. is why I never went back. I just never went back because I could tell. I could just tell from the get go. Like ah, I don't like a lot of Stuart Gar. 
<laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I don't give a shit for it. I can't wait till we start our uh, our video label, the Saturday Night Free Show edits. We just take all the movies we've seen, <laughs> well, edit the shit out of them down to minutes. what we sh- they think they should be, and start releasing those. Yeah, so awesome. When do we start doing that? Here's the five minute version. Of yeah, it. pretty soon, dude. That the, should be forty the, minutes. The child's play opening will be put in the middle of the movie when the cop is actually telling Miss Barkley the backstory where it belongs. That way, you're actually surprised when the doll comes to life. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see you don't see a fucking voodoo like ceremony in the first five minutes. Like, oh, he must be in the doll. I'm totally not surprised. <laughs> you know. I saw him do this and lightning hit the thing. Coming soon. It's like, this needs to be in the middle of the fucking movie. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, I guess I was surprised how much I liked the movie this time around. I've seen it once before and fairly recently. Uh, that viewing was by myself, probably, you know, like late at night watching it because uh, it had come across my field that's of view. That's what you do, right? And that's what you do. You're like, I'm going to watch this. And uh, it didn't impress me that time. And this time it did, and I think maybe it was because of the company. You know, I mean, we're watching it together, and, you know, it took on, like, a different kind of life. Um, I appreciated the – I guess I did appreciate the dra- the care that they were trying to give to the drama, the characters, connecting, you know, the points in the structure of the thing. I'm like, this is actually checking out. Like, this is, like, how you write a, dra- a dramatic, you know, storyline that has this, you know – the monster. It's like, I understand like everybody's point of view and what they're doing and why everybody's doing, you know, the things that they're doing to each other and the, you know, misunderstandings and all this. And Can I ask you a question? <clears throat> Do you feel like, cause like to me, I like, I kind of feel like they kept repeating scenes, right? Like every fucking scene until we get to castle freak has to be like, Hey, let's do it. I don't trust you. Ah, oh, you screwed up again. And like, you just see that three times over and over again. Like, oh, I thought I could trust you. You screwed up. Oh, I thought like, I, don't I know. guess I saw that as like, I, I guess I don't agree. I don't disagree that the movie does feel according to today's, um, you know, like uh, uh, standard. Yeah, I guess the pace, the yeah. standard of a uh, pace in a movie it feels kind of slowish, you know? I mean, there is, because they're on a limited budget, much more is given to dialogue, right? Because we don't have the money to actually do stuff, so we're we going to tell a story and have, <laughs> right, we have a setting, and we're going to have characters, a lot of more characters maybe than you need, and we're going to have them all talk to each other about what's going on. So I guess when it was slowed down to that pace, it was like, okay, they're trying to layer on the amount of stress that the Jeffrey Combs character is under so that he will eventually consider taking his own life and then come to the real, I can take my own life and save, you know, uh, I guess no he's, one will be happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody's supposed to be Everyone happy, right? Be because uh, he's because all be the in heaven together. Then she'll realize that she loved him because, you know, she was conflicted about that before. Um, I thought it worked decently well as a horror movie. I mean, like, I like the design of the uh, the Castle Freak while he's in the shroud. The, the, I guess, like, oh, it's more like so than like when both. he... Both are good. Really good. The bloody shroud. Yeah, I, I wish the shroud were, was black. They were but decent, you can't blow but when it show up. I think right. I just, you know, preferred the, the shroud look of this, you know, naked, you know, neutered, uh, castrated... <laughs> Dude, yeah, like yeah. skittering around the castle wearing this, you know, uh, it's like that was a pretty cool. I, I, I hate the word fucking iconic, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's you know, one of those like instantly recognizable, I the guess, character. Like, character there's toys, yeah, yeah. there's castle there should, toys. Yeah, there's there are, are. are there? Of course, full moon. Yeah, they have toys. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna look that up. That'd be yeah, yeah I, I saw, that. The, I I saw the figure when we were looking for the movie earlier. Uh, it's yeah? pretty, it's uh, pretty legit. I kind of want to see that. I'm gonna look that up. But at the same time, I think that this is probably like lesser Stuart Gordon at the same like I'm a you know, I like Jeffrey Combs, even though I, I, I'm not going to say that he's a great actor. You just kind of you event you like a person's style or personality or something like the style of their performance. And it's like, I know this isn't good, but it's amusing, mm. you know, it's and so I kind of just like watching it. So I think both him and Barbara Crampton are perfectly matched because they're both kind of in that area, you know. Uh, where you just kind of like watching their stuff. Um, but I think it it's not as, even though it tries to be outrageous, it's not as outrageous as Reanimator, even from Beyond, which I'm not, you know, as big a fan of. But those movies are more memorable, you know. 
those are the ones you come back to. And Castle Freak, I mean, to be honest, will I come back to this again? No. Should you watch it? Like, well, you could do worse, you know? I mean, if you can find the fucking thing. Apparently, you know, Hulu is the only place right <laughs> yeah. now where you can get it, and I think it's on Italian. Blu-ray. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'd say if you're, you know, there's a cult following around this movie. So I'm aware that, you know, but I think it's more people laughing at it, right? Like, it's the movie where, you know, the no, uh, girl dude, gets her. to like it. What's his name? Krogenberg or whatever. <laughs> Damn it, Krogenberg. Because he saw it when he was a kid. The same as, uh, you know, Damn well, I guess. Krogenberg. <laughs> <laughs> You'd heard about it when you were a kid, but you know, it has right. that kind of Crackenberg, get in my office. <laughs> <laughs> I want your gun in your badge, Crackenberg. <laughs> we appreciate you writing in and hope you do so again. Oh, please do, because I want to yell Crackenberg more on this podcast. It's <laughs> great. Please do. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, a recommendation from me. Holly, what'd you think of Castle Freak? Well, this. Yeah, Holly. This movie, let me tell you. Um, Holly didn't get to suffer through <laughs> Ilsa, she no, wolf of the we SS. Ilsa. We Ooh. think that would have put her right over the fucking top. Ooh. That was a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll have to give credit where credit is due. The monster was decent. Monster, I think, was legit. I agree. The shrouded monster was the best version. I don't think that the uncovered monster was terrible. The whole like naked castrated, it was just really creepy. Like it really, I think the I think it played either way because it just really creeped the hell out of me. He could be a normal naked guy without even a disgusting face, and you'd be like, ah, get away from me! <laughs> yeah. He just has to bite boobs. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know that's what. I, <laughs> it depends on who was playing him, I guess. You know what? <laughs> Let me take a quick second. I want everybody oh. out there. To, <laughs> I want everybody out there to know this. All right, edit point you know, here. No, no, wait. Okay. You might as well go out there and hit on that girl because you don't know with whether you're going to be the creep or the stud, dude. You could be either or. You could be both. You don't know. <laughs> it's going to be the same to. It's going to be the same to you. You could say the same thing, and either you're the stud or the creep. It's crazy. Insane. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Uh, it was creepy seeing the naked. Creepy yes, no, he playing. was so unnerving. It was so, so unnerving. I, that that's the that's the point of this whole movie. It, it just creeped the living bejesus out of me. It really did. And you know, I didn't. I'm not like I'm not totally against gore or anything. Like when he. When he pushed the cuff off and like ripped his thumb off, mm. I was like, "Oh, yeah. gross! Oh, gross!" That's what but I, paid I wasn't for. like, yep. like, oh. like I, I was still okay. I was like, "Yeah, if that's what this movie is, it it's, I'm, I'm okay with that." Yeah, he like bit it and then broke it off, <sighs> which is fine. You know, I'm okay with that. That's fine. That's it was, fine. it was, it was all fun and good. It was disgusting, it was and it was, great. it was surprise like, of admission. That's what you do. This is gross. It was fine, whatever. But the the sexual stuff, is, it really bothers me. Like. There's just something beyond creepy about it. I, I I can't really I can't really tolerate. Like I felt it I don't might know. be genetic. I don't know, right? Do women like look at sexual attacks in movies a little bit more? Like this is very scary. <laughs> like no, seriously, I am more yeah. Like I like the lizard. The end. The, the part of my brain that like reacts to that is very real, right? Like this is how we bred. This was evolution for thousands of years. Was just getting raped. You know, I can see why well, it's, 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 it's no, it's I can it's see true. why like, women don't like it, that's it. That's the same reason any horror movie that is more realistic will automatically be more scary because you picture what you would do in that situation if it was happening to you and that automatically makes it more scary. So as a girl, like, yeah, this movie like creeped the hell out of me. Like, if it had just been people got stabbed, people got their throats slit, like that doesn't bother me. It feels more like a violation like in something like this. It, yeah, it just it, it's like. I, I just have to think, why is this movie being made? Like, why Why is this scene written? Why did he want to we do like this scene? We like movies. Like, it just, no, like, I, I get it, Eat but at them. the same time, it's like, that's where I go. I'm like, is this, is there a deranged guy out there that thinks this is, like, a cool thing to do? I don't like, think it's cool. As, cool. Uh, as a horror, you yeah. know, writer, and I'm, yeah, and I'm you're, not you're saying... trying to come up with, like... I need to scare them. How do you see audiences are so sophisticated? How do you come up with it? Yeah, and no. generally I think like they go like, well, what would scare me? And the thing that the scares them is or, or, like, they think is fucked up. They 
conjure it up. Yeah, no, and then everybody's absolutely. like, and they think they they like this stuff. I'm like, I think it's the other way around. I think these guys actually find this stuff yeah. disturbing, and, and, a lot of- and they think because it disturbs <laughs> yeah. me, I'm my first like you know the scratch test or whatever. Yeah. If it scares me, it'll scare them, and I'll. Put oh it yeah, in the movie. I get that, and yeah. I get they go for shock value. I get all that. It's it's just like a natural thought process. Like, why is someone coming up with this? It just it, that's the part that like really gets in there and starts creeping you out. But anyway, I didn't like the sexual stuff. Um, and the characters, I I don't. Normally, I love character depth, but in this, I agree with Travis. I did not give a shit about these characters at all. Not even a little bit. I hated that every single character in this movie was a victim. It annoyed the shit out of yeah. me. Yeah. Well, they were all the, victims. Well, I was gonna say, except all the, the Castle yeah. Freak, but he was it, a victim too. Yeah, he's they were every <laughs> single person well, in this aggressor, movie was a victim. Right? Yeah, but he's he was a victim first. Yeah. Male aggression. For sure. Everyone was a victim, and it I was like, really? That's just so shitty. Like, <laughs> can't someone be strong at all? Uh, I just I've, well. Should have been the blind daughter. Blind girl. Yeah, but right. they whisked her out of the movie before. They did. But she she was, became a victim as well. She was a victim too. What are we doing? Everyone was a victim. It just bugged me. Anyway, um, sure. yeah, no, I don't, no surprise here. I did not like this movie at all. So I do not recommend. Sean, your movie. <laughs> oh, Castle Freak. Um, I'm glad I finally got to watch it after 20, 20 years of, of kind of thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I 20 might. years. It. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I need four people to make me. <laughs> right. Right. I, need, I, need I, I need to be forced to watch I this I need movie. a special show. I need a creative show. <laughs> And it took this long. Um, I appreciate any movie that can make me squirm with what they put on screen. And this movie definitely did it. Um, when it comes to like the kind of the sexual gore we've been talking about, we mm. talked about Ilsa before. Sexual. And that sexual gore. <laughs> That's a band name? No, no? it's a song, no, okay. like sexual healing. Yeah, yeah. sexual healing, but sexual gore. You're but I mean, like. Marvin that, Gay right now. Yeah. But that stuff, that's what. Up, that's the stuff up, that bothers up. me or gets a reaction out of me. Like Ilsa took it. That was the line. That I think it crossed in there because it was just like too much. But um, <laughs> um, I, a parade of sexual it, depravity. Oh, it really was. Um, but I appreciate this movie. Um, I was I was OK with the drama of this movie. It is kind of a typical, like we said earlier, uh, a family inherits a house, a castle, a little creepy thing. They go move the family in, we'll rebuild it, we'll do stuff to it, and then shit starts going wrong. It does get typical in that area, um, but I did like the drama between uh, Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton. I think if it wasn't Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, I wouldn't care as much hmm. about that story because hmm. you do tend to see it a lot in these types of movies. Um, but uh, other than that, I did like, I mean, The Freak I think is uh, it creeps. It's creepy. It, it's uh, I think a good design, especially like we said, the shroud. Um, uh, I I recommend the movie. It's, it got a reaction out of me. Um, it it made me. It's still giving me the creeps. Just kind of thinking about it. You know what? You know what sucks about this movie? At the very end, <laughs> do, this, do this movie. This movie should go just like movies from the seventies or whatever. Like. When when Barbara Crampton's looking at her dead fucking husband, you need to freeze frame roll credits. This fucking movie keeps going for like another like five minutes. It's like the funeral. Why the fuck do we care? Why do we need to see well, this? Yeah, the cop, see the little the cop kid, and the, the son. The kid. That's why that everybody so? That's everybody why. lost. <laughs> Who cares? I, I like it. You don't, you I'm don't just saying you, the in the seventies. Boom. Dude's dead, monster's dead. Roll those credits. Like, time to get home, people. It like, was. I do appreciate it, when they're just like, well, we're done, we're done. feature you had, dude, was coming up. So Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Yeah, this movie needs 20 minutes to edit the fuck out of it. Yeah. I do appreciate yeah. the extreme uh, quick credits roll. Um, but uh, I do like, I like most of this movie. I think, especially if you haven't seen it, um, uh, I recommend it. I think there's, there's things in here that will... Uh, that will get to you. It'll make you feel something. And um, I think that's worth seeing. Um, if you've seen it before, you probably like, you know, I felt I, one you're, thing. You're, you're probably good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, uh, it had an effect on me. I, I recommend it. All right. So that's Castle, Castle Freak. Freak on the Saturday Night Freak Show. So next week, it should be Holly's turn. It should be. Holly's <laughs> not going to be here. Oh, damn. Oh, so that bounces, yeah. Holly. I'm sorry. sorry, Holly. She'll be back in Don't two weeks. Don't be sorry. We need to go quicker. That's right. So yeah. I'm up, and next week we are going to watch the Fred Decker directed, Shane Black written. Black and Decker. 
The Monster Squad. Whoa. Because everybody's talking about Stranger Things. I'm like, let's go for the fucking Monster Squad. Boom. Next week there on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>